In just one day, thousands of Yazidis went from living in their ancient homeland to a UN refugee camp like this one. After ISIS captured Sinjar, the main city of the Yazidis, most of them live now in camps like this. Nearly 20,000 live in this one alone. But a few here have made the harrowing escape out of the hands of ISIS. So when they were selling us girls, the buyer would come in to take his slave. If any of us refused, they would beat us very badly. No one went with the buyers willingly. ISIS captured this 19-year-old girl who we named Nazda to protect her identity. She spent 10 months as a sex slave after ISIS sold her to an Arab man for the equivalent of 800 U.S. dollars. The man was really, really bad. He treated me like an animal. He had four wives and they had no sympathy for me. I was beaten and treated very badly. ISIS tried to convert Nazda to Islam and dealt harshly with anyone trying to help women like Nazda. They brought three men into the ISIS court. They were accused of helping the women who had become Yazidi sex slaves. They killed them, beheaded them in front of us. They showed us that this is the fate of anybody trying to help you. ISIS also captured hundreds of young boys, including 14-year-old Mamo. They insulted us and told us we were unclean. They accused us of being blasphemers unbelievers who didn't believe in Islam or Allah. They taught us the Quran and also trained us how to use heavy weapons. Later they told us we should be jihadists just like them and convert to Islam. After months of this indoctrination, Mamo miraculously escaped by convincing his captors he was ill. These are pictures of what Mamo escaped. Here you have 32 young Yazidi boys posing with an Islamic State flag and here they've already graduated. These are meant to be the jihadis of the next generation of the Islamic State. Their goal was clear. To convert us, then to make us into jihadi, and then kill our own people, the Yazidis. He also explained what ISIS told them their ultimate goals were. They said we will not leave any place, even a small part of the world, without Islam. Nazda heard the same goal. They told me they are not a state of Mosul or Raqqa or anywhere. They said it's not a small state. Islamic State is a big state and can cover the whole world. While Mamo escaped ISIS, many Yazidis like Nazda have been rescued through the efforts of men like Abdullah. He acts as a go-between for captured Yazidis by negotiating with their captors. Before ISIS took over Sinjar, I used to buy and sell things inside Syria. Now, with my relationship with the people in Syria, I use that relationship to rescue people. So far, Abdullah has rescued at least 138 Yazidis. I asked him the cost to rescue one or two. It depends. Sometimes we bring them for free without any money, sometimes for just a thousand dollars, sometimes five thousand. It's different. This is a screenshot that Abdullah showed me from a captured ISIS cell phone. It shows Twitter accounts where ISIS members can communicate between each other to buy and sell sex slaves. The Kurdish government set up this office to help rescue the nearly 6,000 captured Yazidis. So far, Hadid Dabani and his team have helped more than 2,000. They hear horrific stories. Describing their situation is very, very hard because some of the girls have told us they have had their hands tied for three months, have been harassed and forced to have sex. Imagine having sex with the mother in front of her son and then killing the son. The plight of one 13-year-old brought Dubani to tears. I tried very hard to rescue her. She's been married five times. She has also been imprisoned. Success stories like Nazda make their efforts worthwhile, and Dubani pleads for more help. Is it acceptable that the international community or the UN, who know that nearly 6,000 people have been kidnapped by ISIS and have experienced persecution, harassments, and treated like animals keep silent? They don't make any steps to help. The Kurdish offensive that retook Sinjar might alleviate some of their suffering. Until then, many Yazidis, like these small children, remain in refugee camps, 
and other Yazidis continue to languish in the clutches of ISIS.